I had two matching kits in my stash. Well, maybe three if you count in the Italeri Dodge WC54 Ambulance. I didn't want to stretch the rules for this group build and so I decided to go for the Revell M7 Priest which I bought in 2008 or 2009. It's a reboxing of an old Italeri kit that was around when I started armor building in the early 1980s. Since I built the Kangaroo several times I was quite happy to find this kit for a reasonable price. And the price is important because I bought some upgrade kits along with the Priest. You'll see those later in the video. Anyway, the kit number is 03086. The instructions start with the assembly of the road wheels, return rollers, bogies and drive sprockets. Next is the assembly of the idler wheels, and here we have the weak point of the kit and the main reason for buying one of the upgrade kits I talked about. This sub-assembly and the air filters are glued to the rear plate and then everything is glued to the lower hull. Step 16 to 23 deal with the gun assembly. The worst bit may be the two pieces gun barrel, but I haven't found a matching metal barrel, so I'll have to use it. The instructions continue with the floor plate of the drivers in the fighting compartment. You will have noticed all the red marks I added to a couple of steps. These are indications for things I want to change. The gun assembly is attached in step 26. And that's why I consider the instructions as suggestions. I'll build the fighting compartment in an order that makes sense to me. And here's the reason why I wouldn't attach the gun in step 26. The way I plan to build this kit, the superstructure of the howitzer needs to be assembled first. I dry fit it to the lower hull for proper alignment while I glue the parts together. After the glue has fully cured I will remove the superstructure and then paint all the interior and the gun separately. That sounds complicated but it's the only way to do it without leaving a lot of spots unpainted. Steps 46 to 56 show the assembly of the superstructure's exterior. The last page shows the assembly of the tanker's figure which will go into my scrap box unassembled. And of course the two different options for the decals. The first is for a US version in 1944 and this is what I'll build. And there's a French option but I'll keep these decals for later use. The decals look quite alright and they seem to be good enough to be used after all those years. And on the right edge you can see that it must have been in 2009 that I got that kit. Let's take a look at the spruce. First we have the lower hull that has some nice detail on the underside. Since it won't be visible I don't care too much about it but it's there. The inside doesn't have much detail but it will be covered with the floor plate anyway. Next is the running gear which will undergo some changes cause I want to paint the wheels and bogies separately. The bogies need to be assembled for this and that means I'll cut off the axles and replace them with 2mm carbon fiber rods the floor plate and the parts for the superstructure. If you keep in mind that this kit is at least 34 years old, the detail is really good. And it's remarkable that I didn't find the tiniest bit of flash. Even the smaller exterior parts are in very good shape. The sinkholes on the underside of the grenade racks don't bother me at all. Nobody will ever see them again. Here you can see all parts for the gun assembly. And some more exterior parts. The side skirts won't be used. And these are the two parts I just don't like about this and all Italeri or Ravel kits that are based on the Sherman. The vinyl tracks. The vinyl tracks are stiff, rigid or whatever you want to call them. And they are too short to put them on without moving the idler wheels a couple of millimeters forward. That would mean removing the kit's two original axles, drill holes and insert some kind of replacement. But after all that's been done the track still wouldn't look good. There are ejected pin marks all over the inside and it's impossible to hide all of them. And paint just doesn't stick good to those tracks. And there are only two pins and holes to hold them together. That won't be enough so you'd have to use staples and they'd be visible if you don't use the side skirts. Why do I tell you all that? Well, I bought these along with the kit almost 7 years ago now. Freel tracks for the Sherman Type T54E1. Kit number is ATL12. 
Today I would look for a cheaper alternative, but back then I didn't know any other brand. The track links come in two pieces and need to be glued. For the drive sprockets and idler wheels there are links that are slightly curved. The links are assembled with short pieces of wire. According to the instructions you'd have to drill holes for the wire into each link, but I checked it. The holes are already there and that'll save a lot of time. The tracks were 25 euro when I got them, while the kit was only 20 euro. I wouldn't disagree if you called that nonsense. Some cheaper replacement would have done the job, but it gets even worse. Initially I was only looking for a good way to build the stowage baskets on the rear deck of the priest. If I had already known about the plus model mesh at that time I'd never have bought this, but here it is. Edwards PE set for the Revell or Italieri M7 Priest. Kit number is 35446. You can add another 15 euro to the kit now. The instructions are quite okay. I'll have to make notes on the priest instructions on where precisely to change parts to make the assembly of all that stuff easier. And I'll have to make my mind up on which parts really need to be exchanged. If the detail is already sufficient or the part is hardly visible, I leave it as it is. I wonder if I'll use more than half of the PE. The PE frets look really nice and they are thin. As long as I can hold the bits and pieces there shouldn't be too many problems. Included with the set are also masks for markings. I don't know if I'll use them, but they look nice. The paper dashboard isn't really detailed, but maybe still better than trying to dry brush the gauges of the original part. About three or four months ago I thought it would be a nice idea to have an upgrade kit for the Priest M2 machine gun, so I spent another 10 euro on the neighbor set. While you are watching the pics I'll give you the sum I spent on this project so far. 70 euro. That's insane, it's not really necessary and I wouldn't have done this if I had thought about the money in the first place. On the other hand, that's the reason why I decided to build this kit for Steve's group build. It simply has to be built after I spent all the money.